What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Illness across all social media platforms. This is the first time seeing my face or hearing my voice. I'm a diagnosed narcissist, and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and also validate the victims and survivors of said disorder. Today's episode is going to be about trophies, y'all. Narcissists and their trophies. How narcissists like to keep trophies. So I talk to a lot of people over Zoom. I do my uh, my one-on-ones over Zoom and things like that. Um, coaching calls or whatever you want to call them. Um, and one thing I, is a consistent, one thing is almost a constant, that people go through, narcissists, they, they end up going through the phone or something pops up on the screen and they see old stuff from narcissists cheating on them. They see old things from narcissists, not even cheating on them, but things that happened before the relationship that, that they hold on to, that they refuse to, the, refuse to delete. Pictures together with their ex-boyfriend or their ex-girlfriend or something like that. Pictures together with their ex-wife or their ex-husband. You know, uh, uh, some cheek clapping tapes and videos and lewd pictures and videos and things like that. And they refuse to delete them. Because a lot of narcissists, people like to kind of hone back into the past. They like to remember that time. Especially, especially, y'all. It's going to sound super, it's gonna sound super insidious, but especially especially if they've cheated on you. If they cheated on you and they feel like they got away with it, they're going to hold on to that stuff because it's, it's insidious. It's like they go back and look at that picture or that video or that item. It could be some items in the closet. It could be a shirt or you know, a pair of underwear or something like that, some shoes or something, a hat. Some, something, y'all, that seems insignificant. But they will. it's insidious because every time that they look at that photo, that video, that hat, they think of the time that they got away with something. And it gives them a power. It gives it. It's like a power trip, y'all. It gives narcissistic people a high. Well, Lee, how do you know that? Because I've done that type of stuff before in the past. I was like a long time ago. I'm 36 years old. I've had. I had some. I've lived some life, you know. But Lee, you, you sound like you're proud of that. No, I'm not. I'm proud of how far I've came. I'm not proud of the, the old me. Of course not. You know, I'm proud of how far I've came, how far I've come. But literally, that's the mindset right there, y'all. You see how that works. You deal with narcissistic, toxic people. You get that behavior right there. You have to adjust to that. Like they go, they, and they're gonna ref, like they. That's that's a lot of times how narcissistic people get caught because they refuse to delete stuff. A lot of and thank goodness for that because that's how you, a lot of people get out of these relationships because they find this information out and they, it allows them to leave. But a lot of times they get caught because they like holding on to those trophies, like literally. Delete the text message. If you if they deleted the text messages or get it off their Apple Watches or their computers or their emails or whatever, if they deleted all that stuff, they will live a better, more healthy existence. But they don't do that. They hold on to it because it it makes them think of, of simpler times when they can get away with stuff. It emboldens them. So now it makes them go out and do more. And a lot of people ask like, why did why did why does the narcissist keep reaching out to the old supply or to the person that they cheated on me with? Because they probably go through their phone, see a text message, or go through the Snapchat, see a saved snap or a picture or something like that, and it reminds them of that person and what they got away with, and they reach out to that person. And they reconnect with that person. Whatever that person is doing, they reconnect with them and things like that. The trophies, y'all, the trophies are just like, they're memories. I know people are just like, yo, everybody keeps trophy dolly. Not for the intent, the narcissist people. Not, not, it's intent matters, y'all. Intent. Why are you keeping this trophy? Why are you keeping this? Like, why don't you let this go? What is the issue here? You know, why don't you? Why, why are you so willing and able to keep this? To keep this? Uh, just if you delete, and it's, I'm telling you, a lot of times it gets them caught. And you ask them, like, why? Why do you still have this in your phone? I'm like, oh, I just haven't gotten around to delete, and I'll delete it. You know what I mean? Well, sometimes they'll just refuse to delete it, and they'll focus on you going to going. Through, they'll make it a big deal out of you going through their phone or their emails or however you found it. They'll make a big deal out of that. As opposed to, you know, what actually is going on. They'll they'll throw you off the topic at hand by yelling and screaming at you and asking you why you're invading their privacy. Why are you invading my privacy? Huh? Why are you doing this? Why are you going through my privacy? Why are you invading my privacy? You know? I just feel like this, this is how situations go. When you're dealing with narcissists, when you're dealing with toxic people, that's part of it right there, y'all. Not all of them do it, but some of them do it, y'all. Some of them more, it's in, I'm telling y'all, it's insidious. There's there's a lot of insidious intent behind it because a lot of times it can remind them of stuff that they've done and got away with. It's just like going back and touch, like this is like this is an old acting trick. They, they say, you know, 
touch something like to 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 connect to a different time in your life to get into to get into character sometimes you have to touch something familiar like some people will rub the bottom of a chair or something like that because of the feel of it some people will put you know look at it oh some people will look at an old picture or rub the rub a scar on their neck or on their ear or so rub behind that ear because it triggers memories it triggers feelings and things like that exact same thing goes on with narcissists because I like, I'm also an actor because I've done that before you yeah, I was rub behind your ear it makes you think of it makes you think of simpler times of something that happened in your childhood or your or your young adulthood or something like that you can hone back in to a, a memory that lets you lock into a character same way narcissistic people do they look they look back at an old picture an old uh, old photograph an old uh, video something else something you know an old teddy bear or something like that I've heard people t t t t t Having teddy bears from their very first relationship, you know, when they were 18, 19 years old, now they're 40 with a teddy bear and they married with somebody else with, with kids and they, the teddy bear is in the kids' room. I'm telling you, and they go in the kids' room, they look at it and it reminds them of their ex. I'm telling y'all, the one they got away, this is, y'all, this always, it's, it's there. They hold on to it. I know a lot of people in the comment section that go, you know, I want people in the comment section to talk about it. What trophies have you found from your narcissistic partner? What trophies did you find? Did you find it for a cheating reason or did you find it just because they refused to let something go, like an old ex? It doesn't have to be cheating, y'all. Cheating is just the simplest thing to talk about. It doesn't have to be cheating. It could be literally an old you know, an old ex or an old uh, old friend or whoever. It, relationships, intimate relationships work better here for, for the trophy aspect of things. But yeah, sometimes they'll have old, like I said, old lewd videos uh, on their computer where they go back and watch. And, you know, it might turn them on to come do something with you. They'll, they'll, think, they'll, be thinking about some, they'll be thinking about somebody else while they're doing it with you. An old ex, because they look at their video, hype themselves up, and go right, go, come dive on you. You know what I mean? If I tell a lot of people when you're dealing with these situations, like, if you if you notice the trophies and they refuse to get rid of them, you have a decision to make. Are you comfortable with them having f photos, you know, of an ex who, who they keep to the uh, photos and p intimate pictures and photos of an ex that they, you know, they tell you that this is the one that got away. This is the love of my life. I miss this person so much. I'm not going to delete these photos because the, you know, these times were simpler. If y'all are comfortable with doing that because they just seem like they're waiting for that person to give them another chance. You know, if that person would come out of nowhere and give them another chance, they would just up and leave you. So are you willing, to, are you willing to wait around for that to happen? A lot of people just, you know, I'll just, I'll just, you know, as long as I don't ask question them about the phone or the videos, you know, well, what they're doing with the phone and the videos, the relationship is okay. Like we don't argue, we don't fuss, we don't fight. As long as I don't question things, now, the relation is the relationship okay if you can't question things. Now, people, I feel like people get get it a little backwards right there because they think it's okay because they're not arguing. You, if you're not arguing because you're stifling yourself, it's a completely different thing. And we never argue. Why? Because one of y'all is scared to bring stuff up that makes you uncomfortable. One or both of you, you just avoid confrontation. That's not a healthy relationship. Good, healthy conflict. Is a part of the relationship. You know what I mean? Healthy, healthy conflict is a part of a of it, it, it's just, healthy conflict is a part of a healthy relationship. It just is, you know. But, in, but there should be boundaries in a relationship to y'all. If narcissist boundaries, if not, is not you know a boundary for you to set is for them not to have a picture of their ex in their phone that they look at all the time or as a screen. I've heard people have their ex as a screensaver, like. Y'all married and got kids and they got their ex as a screensaver on their phone. That's weird, y'all. That's highly possessive behavior right there. They still think they own or the old person belongs to them. They love having these trophies to look back at times when they feel like life was different. You know, life was better back then. It's just, they'll, say it, they'll say it in a disrespectful ass manner to you, too. Life was way better back then. Life was simpler. Times were simpler. I had a, a significant other that listened to me and didn't give me the, you know, didn't beat me down mentally and verbally and hurt me and stuff like that. They'll use and they'll make it. They'll use those pictures and videos to make you feel uncomfortable, to make you feel like you're not enough. Because guess what? That's what they, they. Guess what they don't do with you a lot of times. They don't take pictures. They don't do videos and stuff with you. But they got them all. The ex is all in their phone. I'm telling you, y'all. If that person came back into the picture, they will leave you immediately. They will leave you. Whatever. How many kids y'all got? You know, if it's your husband, if it's your wife, they will leave you for somebody else. They will and try to restart their life because they, those trophies are memories. They, they're keeping them for a reason, y'all. They're not keeping them because they, you know, they don't. They're not keeping them because they hate the person. They're keeping them because they they like remembering it, especially if there's something they got away with, especially if it's something recent, like some 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 nudes in the phone or whatever, some leads, some leads and nudes in the phone. They're gonna hold on to that type of stuff because it, I'm just telling you, it just 
sometimes they prove they still got it. You know what I mean? That's the mindset. I know it's toxic. Is is in again? It's in. I know the nature. I know it's insidious in nature. Yeah, I understand that. I know how my mind works. You know, because I said I've done that before. You know, and I knew why I was doing it. I was just like, you, you look back, it's just like, good times, good times. Like a little sly smirk on your face. Du Duper's delight. You know, anyways, y'all, let me hop off here. It's 7.30 a.m. I've been up since, I did my first one-on-one -on -one this morning at 5.45. Um, now, I've recorded all my videos. Now, I'm going to get my son up for school. And then I'll hit the gym and back back to one-on-ones. Thank y'all for telling me for tuning in. I really, truly appreciate every single one of y'all because as much as y'all learn from me, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I, promise you, I learn even more from you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mental illness is out. Peace. And my podcast.